Hello everyone, this is BuilderShed here, and today we, I'm making a video, a successor video to yet to the last video I made. And this video, I want to go over some. I'm going to go over the basically the some ways to do some the common things people do in the terminal gr graphically, like to do them on their graphical interface. Like you'd usually do them like on Windows or Mac OS. As, which thing is, is possible on Linux, and I want to sh demonstrate and show that. So you're saying, I picked Fedora and I, or with the GNOME desktop environment, and the reason why is because, for one, Fedora is the most commonly used. Well, not, it's not the most commonly used. Um, Fedora is at Fedora is starting to be recommended more is what you meant and or and that GNOME is when it comes to who like beginner distros is actually one of the most used desktop environments in Linux as a whole overall to be honest. No, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Especially some apps like I like GNOME Steam. I'm just not the biggest fan of like how they do things because they love to keep some things too dang minimal for from the user, which I just don't like sometimes how they do it. So yeah, opinions aside, let's get in. So I think the first thing we might as well just show off would be off would probably be just some basic stuff like. We see people, so what about, like for example, file management on Linux? And, and let's for, in addition to that, throw in editing a file. A lot of power users, let's put this out there, a lot of power users also use a file manager, but they use but compared to like your desktop environments, a lot of power users like to use some like use either Thuno or PCMan FM, which are lightweight but pretty pretty good as well. GNOME is a bit more modern, but this is a GTK three version, which is pretty customizable. As you can see right here, this is your default Linux home directory. In fact, this is what it looked like by default. You got your desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, public templates, videos. In fact, if you were to create a, and it literally says up here, put files in this folder to use them as templates for new documents. So if I were to like, for example, we'll pop open GNOME text editor and type in And we're going to save this as go to our templates and save this as play.txt. I could probably go somewhere and just new document. Document and just do that. Template.txt. Let me just fix this chair. Well, I could probably just go in there actually and just fix it. So I'm just going to change it to new text. So yeah, I can go into it. Well, nothing's going to show up on the desktop yet, but I could just do that now. So I don't know why it's not included in there on my default, but that's beside the point. So, this is how you navigate if you want to. And I'm just going to create a new folder right here. I'm going to call it a test folder. So, folder. And I'm going to. Yes, I could also rearrange it, have it shown in grid. 
you can move these anywhere you want. So I'm gonna I could drop it in downloads. That's how you would screw around with them. I can shove another folder in there, but I'm not. You could also copy folders in there. It's just like how you manage files on Windows. And this is why I love file managers like Nautilus, PCMFFM, Lunar, etc., etc. Just file managers as a whole. You select multiple, copy them. I'm going to go documents. And I can just paste them in there. I'll just be like that. And if I want to delete them, you select all of them, right click, it can move the trash. Or I can just put, press the delete button on them, which is my preference. So I'm going to press delete. Ends up throwing them all in the trash. Trash man looking a little bit chubby, so I'm going to empty it. Voila Lee. I'm gonna get rid of that thing too. And when it comes to editing text files, so right here, or I'd say I got this right here. But you usually by default, if it's a text file, you click on it, it'll open up your text editor. If it's KDE, it'll be Kate. If it's GNOME, it'll be the text editor or GEdit, depending on with what you're going to use. <laughs> Some people, it'll load up their <laughs> IDE, rather, e, aka, it'll load, load Emacs or VS Code up for them if they're a bit more of a dev or whatever. Terminal people will load up Vim, <laughs> which is going to look, um, we do not have Vim. <laughs> Nano. Yeah. Let's just put text right there. And do we could do, we could press Control Set, Control S. We could save as or whatever. I'm just going to do Control. I'm just going to click Save and close out. And yeah. So that's that's out. So that's that out of the way. Now what if I want to install, now for install packages, usually they just pop into a terminal do like a command, but yeah, it, it it's something you could easily dissect, If, but not everyone's going to learn the terminal, not everyone's the type to like to use terminal, terminal, well Linux, we have get this app stores we have them too in fact they're pretty okay they're pretty good and they're improving that's kind of the nice thing I like so for example I can get some GVim edit text files not the best <laughs> for example I can get an emoji picker so I'm gonna install emoji picker right here and I'm going to give you a piece of caution. If you got two of these open, I've got Discover and this open, do not do that. Close one of them. You're going to cause a problem. And want to know why? <laughs> Logs. So, yeah, now we got an emoji picker installed. And we just come over here, click on that. And you now pick an emoji. So let's just pick a ball. And notice it's right there. So now you got like a little thing for an emoji on here. Now it's got other categories such as fonts. So if you want some font more fonts on here, this is where you can get them. So Batecna. This looks pretty nice. I don't get it. And of course, part of it's, it's in German, but German, Falsches Ben von, von 
Music. Well, you didn't cruise. This one's fair. And some other ones we can get. Two. Bon Veno looks pretty good. So we can easily get some fonts like that. You also got some Aleph Bet fonts. Fonts. I dig this one real well. Not that I'm going to use it, but it's pretty cool. Greek fonts. fonts. And you also got other apps up here. You got your equivalent to MS Paint. Hey, Markdown Enter. You can give some the view your Wikipedia pages. And you're someone that likes hopping on Wikipedia randomly looking up random crap like me. You'll love this. Well, I want to check some real quick. <laughs> some of these should show flat pack as options. I'm not seeing flat pack on half of them. By the way, to mention what flat pack is, it allows it basically opens your area of software by a crap done. Timeout was reached. Do not know why. But yeah, it's doing that right now and blah blah blah. So there's some other apps. I'm pretty sure we can get Steam. We'll look for Steam right now. Yep, here it is right here. I think it's gonna load it as a flat pack, maybe. No, it's RPM Fusion, not free Steam. Oh yeah, you can get Steam right here. If you want it, but I'm not using this for gaming. That's what the host machine's for. And all that other stuff. Now it's got the categories. But I'm not going to give you a full tour because that's for y'all to explore. And it's pretty dang well. So, yeah. Libre card. Yeah, new score. One of my favorites. I like making music sometimes. Pulse Affix. Q Synth. QAR code. Generate yourself some effects. Restretto. Le Collection. The whole collection. And you got an elementary OS app. I can tell because the icon looks like that. But yeah. But I think the other, but I think an app we sh that I would probably, that I'd recommend downloading would be DNF to Grower. And what DNF to Grower would do would be allow you to download a bit more. Or some apps are behind packages, and even though this will install packages, the, this installs packages. The, the software center installs packages that are recognized as apps apps and as well as flat packs and such and snaps this will allow you to install packages and give like how they're listed from like DNF in the command line hold on hold on hold on this, this list description this list that's our stuff Right here, you can see description, list necessary stuff, summary. It's navigatable. It even has categories. You're you're not gonna get screwed over, okay? You are not screwed. Also, there can be a couple problems with that program sometimes. So, I want to really check these software processors. I do not want to have.
after Gora is now installed. So what if I, so about other apps, like apps are not a repository. What about Vivaldi, which is my personal favorite web browser now. Let's go get Vivaldi on here. Right now it's looking for it. And we're looking for the web browser. We are not researching the man right now. Now let's download Vivaldi. And you want to download the RPM, which is 64. And it's going to take a little bit, but it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is download it. <clears throat> and I, I'm going to mention this there there's a problem on some distros where it, it by the way it's the distros fault and you could change it yourself very easily it easily and you change it like you change it in windows or mac os for this, you click on it, it instead of opening up in like the package installer, it would open it up in <laughs> an archive manager, which I do not know why it thinks it needed to open it up in an archive manager. It, but again, archive managers and text editors are like two universal things. So yeah, now this is done. Now we click on it. The door does not seem to have that problem. Close out of that. It's not loading up details. Local file RPM. Blah, 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 blah. Let's download it. Type in my password. And yeah. Now Vivaldi's on here. So yeah. Now we go in here. Now bring out Vivaldi. I do not know why it's a full screen right now. So we can just get out. Fully loaded. So I always have it. Default release. Continue. Block everything. Mi favorita. And continue. Have the tabs edge style, bottom, right, whatever. I call this Microsoft Edge style and I call this Adobe style. Go with normal. And yep, here's Waldy now. Unpin and pin. That's already in here. I think. Yeah, it's down here. If it's down here, it will not show up in this whole collection. So, yeah. Let's close out of it and. Now let's take a look at Dean after door. And what if we want to install something else other than, well, I wonder what it's doing. It's certainly taking 10 years. And let's load this up fully. Now we can search from here. Hold on, I need to expand this a bit. You can also get some stuff from the Monte Desk environment and a bunch of other stuff. Common stuff, system tools. I will have to admit, half of these are command line tools, you're not. Tools. No, Remina is not. 
But some of these are for like wine. Get that. I'm just saying, get wine. That's going to allow you to run Windows apps on here. Legacy fonts. Nah. nah standard. These are libraries. And and looking back up, we also got administration tools. Node phase for modifying system language. That's how we can go with that. Dial up network and support. If you still use dial up stuff to allow you to to allow you to use more hardware and all that good stuff. Hardware support input methods. Da 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 da. Blah, 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 blah. And I got some stuff. No desktop. I'm not gonna get Chrome desk no shell. No beans extra. And I'm gonna look for um gnome tweaks I should look for that um we can get that and no we don't need that Sometimes you want to try a dash in between this. Hey, hey, hey. okay. A bit wider. Let's see if they got that. I'm looking for a little bit wider three or GK three. Um. It in, get that. And now we, and now what you'd have to do once you got everything selected, you just click apply. Let's do. Oh yeah, you can't forget password needed. You know, just do it. And it's just gonna do do its little thing and stuff. And just saying, you can find a lot more things in this. In fact, you can start install entire desktop environments via this, I'm sure, and many more. So if you want to get rid of GNOME and put on on um, Mate or KE if you want, go ahead. This will allow you to do it for sure. And I see no problem in that. So... Yeah. That's what it's doing right now. And dogs having World War Three with the cat out there. So I do not know what's going on. So yeah, it's doing this little dingle out on here. So, yeah. So, yeah. I'll be right back when this part's done. Looks like this thing is now done doing its little thing, and let's go in here. I'm going over here. We, we we got some things, okay? We got Wine's little file manager, but all that stuff we don't we don't we don't care about what Wine software has it. Here's Wine's file manager. It's reminiscent of old Windows, but we don't care. Like I said. I wish I could just get get this stuff off this page, but yeah. And I'm looking for gnome tweaks. Okay, good idea. Yep, you're in there. So I can set some things in here actually. 
and white and dark or like this icons add some to different variants and such and such and for this one I'm gonna add those And also, just to get some yeah, I'm all just sort out flat pack. get extensions and now I can just go hog wild with no but yeah now let's go into settings thanks this is where you can go configure your wire your network and stuff from here set your stuff etc etc and your Bluetooth devices Appearance is where you can find some stuff, especially some good stuff. Of course, I got I installed the elementary wallpapers on here. I want to set a wallpaper to that. Or this. Now set to dark. And we can go to applications here. We can go through some applications all the way from here and such. applications we got the whole collection here music videos image viewer I want that to be Vivaldi thank you we can change our time from here select it automatic turn automatic off just go matching select our time zone automatically well, automatically set it as well ours here we can change our user settings so let me authenticate so you change them so I can set it to automatically log, log me in and I can add a new user I, I can name him Billy Bob I'll create him a new user I can set him as administrator or not which will add him to the default admin group or whatever Ever, but it won't add them to the necessary groups it was that you that you may need if he if he would do something like QEMU and such so that's why you need to do some other things on here which I'm still gonna be looking for and such so user sets password first login or you can set like that And then I'll set the password right here. Password right here. You can have Enterprise if you want them to connect to a domain. And it'll add the user. So Billy Bob, I can disable his administrator roles. He can't even sudo. I can remove him, I can delete his files, I can completely nuke him from the computer. 
And here's where you find information about the computer. Here. You can get it, go to updates from here, right down here. It'll take you here. And GNOME software, it'll do it. And you can find, and there's a similar menu inside of, and the updates thing is, by the way, all, a similar menu right inside of KDE's Discover, and most other graphical package managers have this also allow you to easily update. So it's something you can easily do on Linux just as easily. And Ubuntu literally has a tool in of itself and it, as you do it. So, well, get download. So, yeah, it's already approaching on 30 minutes. I already showed you all this stuff. Privacy, and all that stuff. Power, did, and oh yeah, change your sound from here. Displays. No need to use x render anymore if this thing's gonna do the job for you. Primary button, blah, blah, blah. Add a keyboard. Again, no need to use X-Render. Add a language. Pretty good. So, yeah. So, overall, what, what's been shown here is that you don't need the point that has been shown here is basically confirmed what I basically said in the last video, and overall, what I've been trying to say. You don't need a terminal to use Linux. You don't need a terminal for your basic util basic things. You don't need a terminal to do your medial things. You can use Linux just like how you use the Windows or Mac OS, and it'll just do it just like fine. And by use it like Windows and Mac OS, I mean like use it like 99% of its users, including gamers, would use it without the terminal. You do a lot of good old tweaking without the terminal. Half the stuff you can get done without terminal. To be honest, there are too many things that are listed as go in the terminal, do this, let's do some medial, like install something. I mean, while in reality, you do not need to go into the terminal. And you, all you just need to do is pop up GNOME software or whatever, and or go online, download the RPM file, and install it. There's also things such as changing your setting, settings and stuff, and you don't need to go in. You don't need to go into the terminal and go into some random weird file under slash Etsy slash blah blah blah. You can just go under settings in of itself, or go into a direct application where it needs to go. So yeah, I do have a distro review planned for tomorrow. And it's going to be about a fedora based distro. That's been getting a lot of attention recently, and I think you probably guess what it is. So, this has been Builder Shed here. Hope to see y'all next time. See you tomorrow, folks.